Before I get into today's video, the White House is trying to change the definition of recession. Technically, we're in the recession, but the White House has said we're not in the recession. All I'm gonna say is it's going to get worse and at some point they're gonna to have to declare a recession, a recession. And I'm gonna make this prediction. If things get as bad as I think they're gonna get, Joe Biden may be a one-term president. All right, so let's get into today's ism. J. Paul Getty, the world's first billionaire in 1957. And why do I wanna talk about this? Because there's a lot of talk about wealth in the generation of wealth. And I want you to examine the wealth of yesteryear and how it can just drastically contrast between the wealth of today. The wealth of today, the numbers are bigger, but the majority of these people don't have any cash. Donald Trump borrowed $4 million from his father and his father wrote him a check because he had the cash on hand. And this is one of the craziest things that you consistently see from what I would consider the wealth peddlers. You have people who, in my estimation, don't even have $10,000 in the bank, who are on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, trying to teach you how to become wealthy. We're in, in my opinion, one of the biggest hype cycles for wealth. And this is why we're going back in time. J. Paul Getty had millions of dollars of cash in the bank. Unlike many of today's so-called wealthy people. And it's a different mindset. Donald Trump's father had millions of dollars of cash in the bank. And one of the things that you will consistently see from the wealth peddlers, and I will include YouTubers, I will include a lot of people in the financial space. I'm a business owner. I'm a practitioner of this. I do this in real life. And I see a lot of advice. I will tell you a story. Uh, it was about 2007. And we had what I want to call the worst storage auction period I've ever seen when I was in the storage auction business. This was, there was nothing to buy for about literally three months. There was no auctions, auctions were getting canceled. And because we had cash, not credit, cash, uh, we had developed the principle of putting away 10% of our earnings in the bank for a rainy day. The three months damn near tapped out that extra money but we were able to stay in business because we had cash. And when it was over and when things returned to normal, we didn't have to pay back any loans because we had cash. I want to talk to you about the mindset of having cash. Once again, the wealth peddlers. J. Paul Getty, uh, I forgot to do the research on his family life, but his father was in the oil business and J. Paul Getty became a billionaire from Getty Oil. For those of you who want to get into the intellectual property school, clock's ticking, clock's ticking. You need to go ahead and get in because the price is going to go up and the price of all my stuff is going to go up. So you need to get in and become a student because what's gonna happen as I introduce more training and stuff, the people who are already in the programs will get massive discounts on the new stuff. So if you wanna lock in your discounts now, you need to go ahead and get in. And oh, all right, let's have this conversation. For people on the payment plan, there is no discount. I can't give you a discount and have to wait for you to pay me. That makes no sense. 
This is for the people who step up to the plate and buy the course in full. Those are the folks who are gonna get the discounts because the discounts are gonna be, you're gonna have to pay it up in full. You're not gonna be able to do a payment plan. So once again, go below, check it out, and get in the Intellectual Property School today. You got the days to 29th, you got, the, you got two more days. So go ahead, jump in there right now. And it was a different type of rich. It was a different type of wealth mindset. Um, one of the things that is very different is J. Paul Getty actually made his billion dollar fortune at the time he died was like 6.5 billion, which would have been worth like 22 billion today. Actually having a business that generated a product, sold that product and made money. Let me say that again. J. Paul Getty became a billionaire from a business that had a product, sold that product and made money. Many of the wealth peddlers are trying to leave out that part of wealth development. That somehow you can do a scheme. Goes again, I have a video on this channel talking about Carl Renfett. I think he's lying. I don't think he's a billionaire. Here's the thing. If you wanna be rich, it's possible if you do the right things. In the United States of America, if you wanna be rich in 2022, 2023, it is very possible if you're willing to do the work. But if you're following these wealth peddlers and their advice, cause here's the thing, I have actually seen people say stuff online, I've read stuff online, that since I'm a actual business owner, I know are fundamentally false. I'll give you an example. Recently, I filed my taxes for my holding company. And there was some information online that I found to be patently false because guess what? The Internal Revenue Service is already set up for you to file your taxes as a holding company. I was reading some stuff, you had to file an informational return. No, you don't. You file one return, you file, you know, and once again, I, uh, as S is form S1120, I believe, for an S corporation, because I have an S corporation. And I was just seeing all of this information that was really, really wrong. And this is what's gonna happen when you get your advice from a wealth peddler, someone who doesn't have a real business, someone that doesn't even have $10,000 in the bank, these people are operating, they're, what they're doing is regurgitating information that has been regurgitated. They're not practitioners, they're not like J. Paul Getty, actually having a real business that scaled, that sold a product, they're not doing that. And I was having a conversation last night and during the conversation, this topic came up and it was dealing with black folks. And I have said on this channel many times, there are a ton of people on YouTube who put out good, actionable advice and they just don't get the views. But during this conversation that came up that, cause this is something else, this guy, he's pretty smart. He has noticed that black folks will not take advice from someone who isn't black. And I really had to think about that because I don't really care if you're Asian, I don't care if you're white, I don't care if you're Mexican, I don't care if you're black. If you have some good advice, I'm up in your wheelhouse. But you know, he made a point because we got into talking about certain people and the reason that these people are winning is because black folks will not actively seek out mentorship 
or advice from non-black folks. And it, it kind of blew my mind because, you know, he said it and I had to say it was true. I just had to say it was true. And I was just sitting there like, cause it's something that I kind of knew, but I didn't really acknowledge. And this is why literally millions of black folks are suffering from information asymmetry because of these wealth peddlers who are putting out felonious, false advice. I mean, it's really sad when you think about it because I know I get all kinds of commentary about the fact that I'm not like Boyce Watkins with B1 Black First. Once again, let me tell you something about me. If I can ascertain information or knowledge from you that will help me in my life, I don't care what color you are, but I am different in that regard because we had a really long conversation. We talked about a lot of things and, um, Once again, I'm putting this video up for a reason. There are many people who have no clue to who J. Paul Getty was because he died like 1975. They have no clue. They have no clue to the Vanderbilts, no clue to these families that got rich and stayed rich for generations. What they're looking at is Jay-Z, and Beyonce. That's what they're looking for, their wealth information, Jay-Z and Beyonce. And it's a flawed business model to look at because Jay-Z and Beyonce are special. They're extra special. You cannot duplicate what Jay-Z did to get wealthy because you don't have Jay-Z's talent. You don't have Beyonce's talent. You cannot. It's kind of like all these folks who want to play football, all these folks who want to play basketball. I'm about to hip you to something. If you are not a certain size, you cannot compete in the collegiate college ball basketball or football, especially football. If you're not a certain size, you know, you can might be able to play cornerback. You might be able to play wide receiver, but if you're on the defense or the offense or even quarterback, the preferential height of a quarterback is between six, three and six, five. That's only like 7% of the population. So you got all these folks out here who've pinned their hopes and dreams on being an athlete and they don't have, as the late Beano Smith, Beano Cook used to say, they don't have the right material. They're not big enough. I don't care how hard they work. Like I was just reading about this guy who just signed up for Alabama in the defensive line. Do this six, five, three, 55. I mean, when I used to play ball and I used to look at what I used to call the monsters, these are people who are inhumanly big. I mean, they're so big that their hands are huge. You cannot compete with that from a mindset perspective. You cannot compete like, and some of these guys, I remember this one guy, he was a defensive uh, lineman and he ran like a four, seven forty. All right, if you are about sports and you know what I just said, someone that's 320 pounds that runs a 4740, that's crazy. But essentially what the black community is doing is looking at a typical examples of wealth development and thinking that they can mirror some stuff. Like I'm about to say some things. If you don't have God given talent, or God-given size, you cannot compute in, the, you, well also with music, 
Like, I'm about to say something. If Jay-Z was coming out today, Jay-Z wouldn't make it. Because he doesn't have the look. Beyonce couldn't make it because she does have the look. But if Jay-Z started his rap career today, he could not compete because he doesn't have the look. I want you to look at who is succeeding in the rap game, especially from a female perspective. If you don't have that look, you will not get put on. Once again, this is God given stuff. How you look, you have no control over that unless you go out and spend a gang of money on plastic surgery and it's gonna pretty much look crazy. I mean, once again, you're looking toward examples, atypical examples, things that you cannot duplicate, that you cannot emulate, that you cannot copy as your leading source. It ain't gonna work. And this is why, once again, I've mentioned it, Earl Nightingale, lead the field. I've introduced so many people to Earl Nightingale. White dude, I don't care he's white. Earl Nightingale put me on. He gave me wisdoms and insights on things that I didn't even know about. And like, I would go ahead and give you some suggestions. You need to start going back in history and looking at the J. Paul Gettys, the Cornelius Vanderbilts. You start, cause see, there was no credit. When J. Paul Kennedy started his company, there wasn't credit. There wasn't loans like it is today. It, he actually had to produce a profit and make a, a profit to grow his company. Like today you have these businesses, 65% of the largest businesses in San Francisco don't make a profit. DoorDash doesn't make a profit. I think Uber finally made a profit. I don't know if Lyft has made a profit. Many of these high tech startups have not made a profit because they're dependent upon the capital market to keep fueling their operations. J. Paul Getty produced a business that produced cash that made a profit and he grew his business organically. Does that kind of sound familiar? You, you will not, once again, I'm gonna put out a course how to turn credit to cash, but it's gonna be very different than what's on the marketplace right now. But I've never started a business on credit. I've never started a business with a loan. I've started businesses that had to produce a profit like J. Paul Getty to stay in business and to grow. And this is one of the things, like I call them the wealth peddlers because they're selling you a dream. They're selling you a concept. They're not selling you reality. And during this global reset, in this, once again, this inflationary period, we have an opportunity to get wealthy, but you gotta have the right information, which is why I am starting a consulting company. Uh, I'm going to do it like, once again, let me go ahead and just lay the groundwork. If you're broke, you don't have a business, you just kind of start some stuff, you have no money, this isn't for you. This isn't for you. The Art of Holding Consulting Program is not for you. This is not something you could finesse. This is not something you can shape up. This is not something you can mindset your way through. You're actually gonna have to have a business that produces revenue and produces a profit. That's where you gotta be. 
So what's gonna happen? And one of the reasons I decided to do this, because uh, this is a write-up, I had a consulting call yesterday, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed talking to this young person. As a business, he he's taken some hits, he's taken some lumps, I'm not gonna put all his business out there, but he has a business that is making him a profit, and because he has controls and constraints, he leaves most of the money in the company. He, he doesn't have to touch the money. So kudos to him. And what I'm gonna do is do forensic, because there's a lot of business owners out there, and I'm gonna say it, there's a lot of black business owners out there who are listening to the wealth peddlers who are gonna lead them astray, who are gonna lead them down false roads. I, I made a comment during one of my uh, training sessions, and I'll go ahead and name names, Noel Randall. She put out that she was renting her cars on Toro. This woman is a millionaire. And then I went ahead and did a little investigation and found out that she's selling a car rental course through a partnership. So she's getting paid. Now it made sense because once again, I would not put my Porsche or BMW on Toro or hire a car, any of them. You wanna know why? Whenever you rent out cars, even if you have good experience, your cars are gonna get damaged. Something's gonna happen. And especially with a high performance vehicle like a Tesla or a Porsche, and you get someone who doesn't know how to drive these vehicles. So I'm gonna really get into the nuts and bolts of business. And what we wanna do is facilitate a business for you that produces a profit. So once again, like I said, if you don't have a business, you don't have no money, this isn't for you. Now, for everyone who has joined the corporate toolbox or the corporate papers, I'm gonna make this, there's gonna be some new training. This will be available to you because you got in a long time ago. So I'm gonna make this training available to you. And I'm gonna give you a discount on the consulting calls, not some crazy discount because like this program is $15,000. So this isn't for a regular person who has no means, who has no business. And one of the things that I am looking for doing, cause like yesterday, I thoroughly enjoyed that conversation. I thoroughly enjoyed, cause I like to see people do well. I like to see people win and all of this aspirational alux type stuff where you know future beers come to get inspired you know inspiration is very short-term fuel determination is very long-term fuel so going back to the example of j paul getty the world's first billionaire and he got rich and he stayed rich until his died. And many of his family members are still rich from that Getty money. And this guy just went out and created a business and he grew it and he grew it and grew it and became fantastically wealthy. Once again, my kudos goes to Fred Trump. Fred Trump was the real genius in that family. Donald Trump is a great promoter, a great showman but Fred Trump was the real juice for that family because Fred Trump had a business that put millions and millions and millions of dollars in the bank. You talk to these wealth peddlers, they don't understand the purpose of having cash money. I've heard these clowns talking about, oh, as soon as I get some money, I just go ahead and invest it. I'm like, you claim to be a business owner and you have no reserves? That rings kind of false because one of the things that I've done is set my business up. The money I make this year, I'm not even touching. I will live on that money in 2023. I'm not even touching that money. And I, I see a lot of information that I know from practical experience that rings false and it rings hollow because we're in this hype cycle. 
we're in this big old hype cycle. We're in, we're in this massive hype cycle where people are just regurgitating bad information. And you want to know one of the reasons that they get away with it? They get away with it because most people are not practitioners. A lot of people are not practitioners. So we're going to be having, uh, I'm going to create a playlist called real money. And this is going to be the first video in that playlist. Also, for those of you who want to get into the intellectual property school, clock's ticking, clock's ticking. You need to go ahead and get in because the price is going to go up and the price of all my stuff is going to go up. So you need to get in and become a student because what's going to happen as I introduce more training and stuff, the people who are already in the programs will get massive discounts on the new stuff. So if you want to lock in your discounts now, you need to go ahead and get in. And oh, all right, let's have this conversation. For people on the payment plan, there is no discount. I can't give you a discount and have to wait for you to pay me. That makes no sense. This is for the people who step up to the plate and buy the course in full. Those are the folks who are going to get the discounts because the discounts are going to be, you're going to have to pay it up in full. You're not going to be able to do a payment plan. So once again, go below, check it out and get in the intellectual property school today. You got the days to 29th. You got the, you got two more days. So go ahead, jump in there right now.